Hi everyone and welcome to this uh, landscape photography training video. This video is taken on various locations in Panama and uh, they are meant for inspiration and education. You can pair my ideas and approaches with your own and uh, maybe you can get some different and unique photographs. So, we'll also show you how I edit the photos in Adobe Lightroom. So it will be a complete session from the field work into the computer work. So, let's go out in the field and do some work. Hi everyone, it's Evi Martinsen here. Here uh, I am in Altos de Campana National Park in Panama. I've been on a field trip for one week now and it's early morning, it's sunrise and behind me I have very nice mountain formations and hoping for some good side light so I can catch the formations, the contrast there that will makes, make good uh, compositions so hopefully we will get some colors on the sky too and uh, here I have also a nice foreground with some trees, the mountains and the sky. So let's see what happens. I'm going to work with my graduate neutral density filters. Uh, I have my cable release and a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. And uh, I'm going to shoot at uh, ISO 200 at f16. Aperture f16 and uh, then the camera will choose the shutter speed for me depending on the light. So let's see what happens. So let's go to work. I'm using my four stop pottage Galen Rubble Graduate in Neutral Density Filter. Here you can see some of the sceneries here and uh, have a pretty good and high contrast between the sky and the foreground. Then I need to use my four stop pottage Gale Ravel graduated neutral density filter. I put it over here over the lens and drag it down to the horizon. Then you can see what happens. I balance the light between the foreground and the sky. This is with filter, this is without. With filter and without. So it's important where you place the edge of the filter, to place it in correct position. The sun is on the way up. Hopefully now I will have some side light on the beautiful mountain formation behind me here and get some very good contrasts. The sun is softened by some clouds over there, so we won't have this hard contrast, but we can have, have some softer lines on the ridges here, on the mountains, in contrast to the deeper shadows. Let's see what happens. National Park. We got some good shots. The shots of the sunrise, the mountain formations. Now it's time to go back to the computer and see what I can do there in Adobe Lightroom. And here we are on the computer after a nice morning out in Altos de Campana National Park. And this uh, is an undeveloped raw file from the, this morning, and it was a very beautiful sunrise. And let's see what we can get out of this. So, we have many good things here. First, I want to warm up the colors a little bit 
we have a, some bluish tones here and we have warmer tones here and I want to just warm up everything a little bit but I don't want to lose all the blue see now we have see the difference too much blue too much warm I want to balance between the warm and blue tones or warm and cold tones to be here a little bit there I think a little bit more blue yeah I think we are here then I want to adjust the contrast slip it up I want to do the sharpen the medium tones with the clarity drag it up to 25 vibrance up to 45 a little bit saturation you see now it's already a much more powerful image very nice i think a little I want to cool it down a little bit but now a very nice balance between the cold and warm tones let's go down and sharpen under the detail section drag it up to 58 1.1 1 .1 on the radius and masking I press the option button drag it up to 40 the dark areas will not be sharpened I want to enable the profile corrections and remove chromatic aberrations and the vignette is there so now we have a nice image so let's see we can lift the shadows a little bit here not too much the shadows here drag it to the right you see here this is too much I want this nice contrast here between these ridges and the shadows so I want to darken a little bit more I think here and I want to work with the brush a little bit on the ridges here to Lighten them up a little bit. I need to adjust my brush size. Scroll on the mouse. Around here, I think. We can start down here and just add a little bit more in this area. You see here, this is the area I worked in now. So to overdo it. I think we're gonna be around here get a little bit stronger lines here so I think we are done with this let's see in full frame yes spectacular so I see you in the next section And here is another image from the same morning in Altos de Campana National Park. Look at the nice mountain formations. Uh, I shot this image at uh, ISO 200 with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens and I zoomed in to 60 millimeter. I use f16 and one of a one sixth of a second. And Let's see what we can do. So first I want to cool down the temperature a little bit, not much. A little bit to the left with the color temperature, the white balance. Maybe around here. What we gonna go? Yeah, I think here. We add some contrast. I also want to darken the shadows a little bit to get more contrast between the 
breaches and the shadow are a little bit there. I want to make it more crispy with the clarity. It sharpens up the medium tones. There. And a little bit vibrance. The vibrance is a very smart tool for boosting up colors that are not so present in the image and I like this. Now look, the image is much better already. A little bit saturation. Not too much, not like this. And not less. Around there. Nice. And let's see, we go down here. The standard sharpening at Go to 58, 1.1 1 .1 on the radius, and use the masking tool. Press the option button on the keyboard. Drag up to 40, around 40, there. So you see the dark areas will not be sharpened. And I want to use the lens corrections and enable profile correction. And I want to remove chromatic aberrations. These lines that can appear here between the horizon and this ridge here. I also want to add a little bit of vignette around here so I keep the viewer in the frame. Drag it a little bit there. And I also want to adjust the midpoint. Drag it, you see here. If I see it better, if I do it like this, and I can fine tune the midpoint where I want it, but I want not so dark at the edges, maybe just a tint or more darkness. And the midpoint can be around here, I think. So let's see what we can do more. You see the ridges here, they have some yellow. I want them to be more distinct. So I go up to the luminance here. And you see I already fine tuned a little bit here. Let's zero them out. And I can drag it up, see here. Get more contrasts. A little bit on the orange. Nice, nice, nice. And let's see the picture in full frame. Yes, I like this. Nice mountain formations with the side light that creates this contrast between the highlighted area and the shadows. And I didn't take in all of the landscape in my pictures. I just chose the sections of it and try to make the strongest compositions and um, I think this was the best option in this case. Press the F button one more time and uh, we are done with this and I'll see you in the next section. Hi everyone, it's Oe Martinson here. It's early morning. I'm in the interior of Panama and uh, I'm going to shoot a landscape photograph with my 100-400mm lens. With this lens I can pull things that are far away from the camera and get it closer in the picture. I'm using a tripod. <coughs> when I'm using a tripod it's important to switch off the image stabilizer. because it can create unsharp images if you don't switch it off. The reason is the image stabilizer is for handheld and it's actually looking for vibrations and if it doesn't find it <coughs> then 
it will create it and uh, your picture can be unsharp. So switch it off and you're ready to go. I'm using a cable release. I press the shutter here and uh, it's much better because then I avoid camera shake when I press the shutter. I also switch the camera to manual focus so I will sharpen the images manually. I like that way better when I'm working with landscape photograph. In wildlife photography it's uh, fine to use the autofocus, I do that a lot, sometimes manual too, but for landscapes I use more or less manual focus all the time. Let's go, let's get started, see what happens. Now I have my camera on the tripod and uh, I'm using the 100 to 400 millimeter lens and what I'm, you see right now is the 100 millimeter crop and uh, we can change that, get it things closer, get it closer here, zooming, zooming in, here I am at uh, 200 millimeter, it's a different story and I can get it even closer up to 300 and 400. So now I'm shooting with a lens at about 250 millimeter and the sun is lighting up parts of the landscapes and then I can change my composition according to the light now it's shifting. I go for my cable release and I press the shutter. Nice. Very nice light over there now. Don't touch the camera when you use this. No contact, no vibrations. Now we see shade. I would like to have the contrasts in the landscape with the sun and the shadows in different layers in the frame. Now everything is in the shade, but maybe 30 seconds from now it's a different situation. This was a very good morning. Uh, I got some good frames uh, with the good light and uh, good layers in the frames. And uh, now I have to go back uh, to my computer and let's see what we can do in Adobe Lightroom. Hi, here is an undeveloped raw image from the, this morning's work and I think this is the best image I took. Here we have different layers with uh, shadows, we have sunlight, we have uh, shadows, sunlight and in the background we have the mountain in shadow and as you can see this uh, picture lacks contrast colors and tone so let's go to work I'm gonna start here at the top and I will just start to adjust the contrast a little bit so I drag it up to round 29 I think and adjust the clarity so the medium tones will be more crispy the clarity sharpens the medium tones and I want to add some vibrance up to 45 and a little bit saturation. There we go. It's already much better. And let's do the sharpening. Drag the, the amount up to 58. Radius 1.1 and also I want to use the masking tool. I press the option button and drag the masking up. So the dark areas here will not be sharpened. We don't need to sharpen the blank surfaces like the sky. <clears throat> here I don't need no noise reduction because I'm shooting at ISO 200. 
And you can also see I shot this image at, uh, at uh, focal length of 220 millimeter at f11, aperture f11, at 1 over 160 of, of a second. Let's go down here. I want to enable the profile corrections and the chromatic aberration. And we have the vignette here. And I also want to add some extra vignette around the edges of the frame. <coughs> so I drag this under effect. We have the post crop vignetting. I drag this to the left a little bit. You see it darkens the edges of the frame. Well, not much, but a little bit. Then I keep the viewer more inside. The picture here. Now we have done some overall editing. Now we're gonna go into details and I want to light up this sunlit area a little bit more and this area contains of uh, co the colors green, yellow and orange. So I want to go to the HSL, the U saturation luminance section and I want to lit up the yellow. Let's see what happens now. Look here. Try to get a little bit up. Same with the green. Lit it up. And lit it up on the orange. So I can do lip it on the saturation. Not much. Lip it on the green. And a little bit on the yellow, a little bit on the orange. Good. Now I want to fine tune even more. I want to darken the shadows a little bit more. So we have the shadows here, we can lift them or darken them. In this case, Instead of lifting them, I want to darken them so we get better contrast between the sunlit area and the shadow area. So I'll drag this to the left, around here. Now we have better contrast. We have more layers now, more distinct layers. Shadows, sunlight, shadows, much better. And I also want to find you a little bit more. I want to work on with the brush. So I want to lit, light up this area even a little bit more. So we can do that a little bit. Just the size. And Lip it down, not too much, here we go. <coughs> so, we have a better picture. If you want to add more drama, we can also go up here and we can darken the sky a little bit. So. What I can do then is work with a graduated neutral density filter here. I want to darken the sky. So I can click here. I press the shift button on the keyboard and click. Then the lines here will be straight. If I let go of the shift button, you see it will start to pendle. The pendulum will start. And drag it down here. I want to adjust it according to the reach here. A little bit down. And like this. And then we see this is the area we darken. And add just a little bit darker skies. Now we have a much better image and uh, Let's see it in full frame. Press the F button on the keyboard. 
not too bad I like these layers with different uh, lights light and shadows that's what photography is we are drawing with light so thank you for watching this video and I see you in the next Hi, it's Sergio Martinson here. Here I am in a tower above the rainforest in Panama. It's early morning and I'm waiting for the sunrise. And it's a very damp and humid morning. And uh, I'm going to use my 18mm lens mounted on the tripod. And my cable release. You can hear the parrots in the background here now. And I have my graduated neutral density filters ready. And which one I'm going to use, whether it's the 2 hard, 3 hard, or the 4 stop hard edge filter here, it's depending on the light and the balance between the foreground and the clouds. So let's see what happens. So let's go to work. I'm going to try one with the four stop cottage graduated neutral density filter because there are big contrasts here now between the foreground and the clouds. My camera settings are uh, on ISO 200. I have my 18mm lens, the wide angle, and uh, my aperture now is uh, f11 and I'm in aperture mode. So let's see. I handheld my filter and one small spot on it. I will bring one of these. You can remove small spots if you have them. Handheld the filter and balance it. I drag it down to the horizon. We have interesting scene here. Oh yes, works very well. One more. The light is changing by the second now. The sunrise is very fast here in the tropics. Another one. Yes, now I get uh, nice clouds and the uh, mystical mist about the rainforest canopy. It's very good. Now the sun is up. Uh, we have a lot of damp and mist in the rainforest now, behind me here and there. And I'm going to use my 600mm lens to take some. Uh, small parts of the forest which may be more interesting than taking in everything with a wide angle lens so when i have uh, my 600 millimeter lens on a tripod i want to switch off the image stabilizer turn off the image stabilizer and also use manual focus <coughs> and i'm going to try this direction first i see one interesting thing over here with a lot of mist I use my cable release to avoid camera shake and I press the shutter Perfect. Nice. Now I'm going to wait for the sun to hit the forest over there, and we can get some good, good uh, forest canopy, the rainforest canopy with the mist around, and maybe with some golden light. Here we can see a part of the rainforest and the damp 
around the tree canopies. Very nice. Very nice. It's been a great morning here, and uh, I've taken a picture with my wide angle lens, my 600 mm lens, and my 24 to 70 mm lens. Now let's go in on the computer and see what we can do there. Hi again, it was a nice morning there in the rainforest, and here we are at the computer. So let's go to work. This is um, the image taken with my 18mm wide angle lens. I shot this at ISO 200 at f11 and with 1 25th of a second. Let's start with adjusting the contrast. Drag it up to around 25. This is an image where I want to lift the shadows. We have a lot of shadow areas here. Some images with dark in the shadows, but here I want to lift them to get more details here, more details in the foreground. So we can end up here, I think. Add some clarity, drag it. It sharpens the medium tones in the image. And we add some vibrance up to my more or less standard value 45 and a little bit saturation how much I adjust here is also depending on the settings I have here I'm shooting with Adobe standard but if I shot this with camera landscape it would be a different situation and it will be more saturated from the beginning so instead of preset this uh, more saturated image I adjust it myself in Lightroom so I shoot with a more tuned down color standard and adjust it myself here so for now we are good lip it up on the saturation And the sharpness up to 58, not on the detail, uh, and we use the masking, and I press the option button, you see here the dark areas will not be sharpened, and I drag it up to around 40, so the sky doesn't need some sharpening. And we want to do the lens correction, see what happens now. I click the enable profile corrections and it fine tune and also remove the chromatic aberration, which can be color lines between the sky and the horizon. It can be color lines like a blue, green, yellow, red lines here. I click this, it, it will remove the problem. And we have some vignette and I can add a little bit extra vignette here just to keep the viewer more in the frame good now let's fine-tune things I want to increase the luminance on the green a little bit see here this is probably too much, this is too little, so I want to get the leaves a little bit up there. Also a little bit on the saturation on the orange here on the sky. And a little bit on the green. So in this case, out in the field, I balance the light here between the foreground and the sky with a graduated neutral density filter. And uh, then I got this good balance between the sky, colorful clouds and the foreground. And you have this nice mist here and a nice greenery here in the foreground. 
so I like this image so I think we are done for now with this so let's see the full frame yes I think we have it and here is another picture I shot uh, in the rainforest this morning uh, it's taken with a 600 millimeter lens you can see it here 600 millimeter I showed you that ISO 200 at f14 aperture f14 at 100 of a second shutter speed so let's get started it's a nice misty mystical landscape this you see it's a little bit cool tones and I want to warm it up so I go to the color temperature I drag the slider to the right to get the more warm tones we had out there like this you see this is probably too much I want to find you need in here I think I maybe I remember it like something like this the Sun was coming up I also want to raise the exposure a little bit up Get more vibrant a little bit extra there and increase the contrast as we have nice contrast between the mist and the trees here nice graphics Get just the uh, clarity, get a little bit more crispy in the medium tones, add some vibrance. Now let's see, I want to take down the color temperature after I adjust to the vibrance, get a little bit too warm. I want to take it a little bit to the left. There, that's more natural. Let's go to the sharpening and we go to the 58 and 1.1 and we're going to do the masking press the option button on the keyboard drag the slider in the dark areas will not be sharpened because this mist doesn't need sharpening there we go nice we want to enable the profile correction on the lens and remove chromatic aberration and I want to add a little bit vignette and I keep the viewer inside here and I want to give a stroke of the brush in this area a little bit up on the exposure just there adjust the brush size by scrolling on the mouse here and I'm only at plus 10 on the exposure plus 0 0.10 so I drag it just over here yes let's take a look in full frame good I like this so don't be afraid to use your telephoto lens for landscape pictures it can work very fine and i'll see you in the next section it's Zoe martinson here i am now in panama and it's a beautiful evening and uh, sunset will be right there i also have planned a shifting position if something good happens here then I can move over there and take some other interesting shots. And here I have my camera with a 24 to 70 millimeter, and I'm shooting at f16 at ISO 200. I have my cable release, the tripod, standard setup. I have two filters in my pocket now. One is a forced up hard edge. Gale Ravel neutral density filter and the uh, three stop <coughs> Darrell Benson reverse graduated neutral density filter. <coughs> so 
let's see what happens now. Uh, in the foreground here I have nice forest and in the background I have some hills and some um, very distinct trees and uh, let's wait for some colors or other interesting things to happen. Now I have shifted the position because it's a very interesting cloud here and uh, I'm going to try to capture this beautiful landscape with that cloud. The light shifts very fast now and uh, I have the sun set there but that cloud can be very interesting when the clouds are the sun is going down a little bit more. Maybe I have some colors on it. So let's see what happens. And here's a composition. Uh, there's some clouds, but I hope it will open up and uh, maybe I'll get some colors. Now it's time for the Daryl Benson Graduate Neutral Density Filter. It's a little bit darker uh, over the horizon and a little bit um, lighter upper, in the upper part. And uh, right now we see a picture without the use of the filter. Now I put it over the lens and darken the clouds and we can see that the foreground is coming more up. So we'll take a picture here. It will be a good balance. So this is a good option for the Daryl Benson Graduate Nutency Filter. This is without filter, less balanced, and here is with filter. We get more of the foreground up. Hi there. This was the best uh, shot from this sunset. Uh, and let's go to work. The first thing I want to do here is to warm up the tones here a little bit, I drag the color temperature to the right, there, and you see here, this image lacks some dark tones, it lacks dark tones, and you see here on the histogram in the left side where the black tones are, black tones here and the shadows, so I want to drag the blacks you see the histogram now it's moving to the left and the image gets darker and gets better contrast and I want to increase the contrast already now we have a better image and I want to lift the shadows a little bit up You see this area needs some more details, so just lift shadows, then I can increase the contrast again to get better contrast here in the foreground. <clears throat> now let's uh, sharpen the medium tones by using the clarity up to 25, and now let's get some color seen here by boosting up the vibrance here. 45 around there a little bit on the saturation not too much nice it's already a much better image and we go down here sharpening up to 58 1.1 on the radius and the masking tool i press the option button drag the slider up to around 40 and the dark areas will not be sharpened so the the option button is good on this slider you can also use it on the blacks up here if i press the option button here on the blacks you get a white screen and if I drag the black slider more to the left, you will see these uh, black fields coming in. And they say that the correct place for the black tone is just when you start to see these 
black dots coming in. So let's see what we can do. It's around it, at this area. There are really not truths about this, but let's see. I think that was too much. So I want to fine tune it black a little bit. Yeah, I think it was that area we were in. And uh, let's continue down here. We want to enable here the chromatic aberration and we have already enabled the profile correction. But I want a vignette. So I think we are getting there. I think I can lift the shadows a little bit up here. Now we have more details here. This is in the shadow area of the sun, so it's a little bit darker. This area is lit up by the sun, but it gives a nice contrast. What we can do now to increase the contrast in selected areas is, uh, for example, to use the, I can use the graduate intensity filter and just fine-tune the contrast here in this area, in the foreground. <clears throat> so I set the exposure to zero. I can increase the contrast. And I select the area here. Press the shift button and drag upwards. When I drag upwards, I work in this area below here. Everything below this lower line We'll get the full effect of what I do here in these adjustments. And we have a graduated graduation between here. So full effect here and no effect above here. So what I want to do now is just to increase the contrast. You see here in the foreground. Get more crispy details here. Also lip it up on the clarity here in the foreground. I can also drag this graduation a little bit up. So let's see what we got now. Let's see it in full frame. Yes, nice evening shot about the forest canopy. I like it. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next section. Hi everyone, I'm in the jungle of Panama and uh, it's early morning. A very beautiful landscape in front of me. I've already taken some pictures. I've used the three stop hard edge Galen Rover graduated Newton density filter. Now I'm going for the four, four stop. And I have to work fast. The light is changing. Yes. We have mist, we have very beautiful scenery, and uh, I'm really in the middle of the jungle here, and it's very good to be here. So, let's see what we can do. The light is changing by the second. So, I just to watch, and then I follow the light, see what I can do with it. It's very beautiful now. This is a good situation here. And but now I will wait for some sunbeams to hit the mist and see what it does. My settings on this session is uh, F16 and uh, I, have, I, I have ISO 200. And I'm working now in aperture priority at uh, minus one exposure. So I have to fine tune the image now because the clouds are changing. And I fine tune it so it, I get the strongest way of seeing. Oh yes, this is good. Yes, yes. 
four-stop pottage. Very nice mist. Perfect. It's been a great morning here in the rainforest. Very humid and uh, all the mist and uh, the colors on the clouds, everything makes it magical. Now let's go in and see what we can do in the development process in Adobe Lightroom. And here we are at the computer after an awesome morning in the rainforest. And uh, I picked this one, it uh, is one of the best. And uh, let's go to work. The first, first thing I want to do is to increase the contrast here, loop it up. And we can lift the shadows, lift it. And also the exposure, lift it up. Not much, 0 0.10. The clarity up to 25. Vibrance to 45. Dip it on the saturation. And look, we already have a much better image. Dip it more on the saturation here. There we go. And sharpen. These are more or less standard settings, so we're going to fine tune it more when we have done this. The basics here, enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration, but I also want to keep the vignette, so drag it in and also add a little bit more vignette here. See, it darkens the edges of the frame, but I don't want too much and not too little, but just a tint of darkness at the edges. There, minus four here. Now let's do some brush work and I want to give some extra light to the sunlit area here. Then I get a better contrast between the shadow areas and the sunlit areas. So I'm going to adjust the exposure, lift it up using the brush, adjust the brush I say by scrolling on the mouse, start here, start to paint like a painter. Now I have selected the area and I can adjust in this area darken or lighten you see give me not too much I think here 0 0.21 I also want to do the same here in the foreground add a little bit extra here on the greenery so I take a new one I pick a new brush we are here on the brush tool new and a bit smaller brush, I scroll on the mouse here, adjust the size and start to paint just at the edges here. A little bit here, these nice plants and the trees. Fine tune a little bit up. See, by doing this, I get better contrast between this more dark area in the section here and the foreground. And I close it. And I also want to go to the HSL section and fine tune some of the parameters here. I want to Increase the luminance on the green. You see here. So it will give me a better contrast in image. So lift the green tones, lift it up. So we will lift it on the orange because let me see where we have that. No, not too much there. 
Let's keep it to zero. Let's see what with the yellow. Yeah. The yellow area is down here. So I want to lift it a little bit more. You see now, here is a little less yellow. Here's more. So I want to lift the yellow. And we have much better contrast between here, this <coughs> foreground layer, this layer, and the sunlit layer. You can also add a little bit saturation on just the green color and a little bit on the yellow. Not too much, just a tint. Nice, nice, nice. So let's fine tune the white balance a little bit. See what we have. Try to warmer, it will be destroyed. Too cold, also destroy the image. But let's find a nice balance because we have nice blue here. I want to balance it with the warmer tones down here. I think around there. Yes. And I shot this image with uh, ISO 200 with my 24 to 70 millimeter lens, the zoom lens, at 46 millimeter focal length, at f16, aperture f16, at 1 25th of a second. At f16, I get the depth of field from the foreground to the far background. Let's see now the picture in full frame. Yes, awesome. I really like this. It's a very nice morning. Thank you for watching. I see you in the next section. Hi, it's everybody from here. Uh, behind me here is a beautiful waterfall. And I'm in the interior of the Copa province in Panama. We're going to shoot some uh, landscape pictures here. I have my uh, tripod, cable release, and I'm going to start with the 85mm lens. And I want to shoot a vertical composition of that uh, waterfall behind me. So, let's get started. I'm going to use ISO 50, aperture f16, and I'm going to use manual metering. So, and I will spot meter the waterfall, so uh, I get the light, I measure the light after the highlights, and the rest will fall in place. So, I have my tripod out in the water, and I'm ready to go. That's it. That was uh, great. I put the work can fall off. And uh, now it's time to go in and edit the picture in uh, Adobe Lightroom. I'll see you there. And here is one of my images from the waterfall. And uh, let's go to work. I see I used the ISO 50 here. Uh, and I used my 85mm lens. And I chose the f16 aperture and I got the 0 0.8 seconds exposure time and the reason I used the low ISO and the f16 in this picture where I really don't need a large depth of field but I want long shutter speeds in the daylight so I want this water to be very soft and uh, paint like so i set down the iso to iso 50 the aperture to 16 and uh, i spot metered the light 
here on the most bright part then the rest will fall in place in the upper part of the waterfall we have a more lit up area than in the bottom so when you're working in situations like this you have to measure the light spot meter the light here at the brightest section and then everything else will fall into place so let's go to work and uh, don't forget to use the manual light metering mode on your camera when you do this so first i want to cool down the color temperature i want it cooler tone so drag it down to the left here to give it a cooler mood I think down there more bluish tones i want to increase the contrast and i also want to lift the shadows Let's see they get more details here at the edges and here and we adjust the clarity I think up to 20 22 that's some vibrance see what happens to the blue tones now it will be reinforced oh yes that's too much but we end up around here a little bit on saturation not too much here because it can be too much but here around 10 i think 12 and we go to the sharpening up to 58 1 by 1 and also the masking tool press the option button and i drag the slider and the blank surfaces will not be sharpened and the blank surfaces you can see as dark fields here and uh, the dark fields will not be sharpened also want to enable the profile correction on this lens remove chromatic aberrations if there are some and i want to keep the vignette in here and i think we are done with this one let's see it in full frame yes magical waterfall look at that rock it's stuck here in the upper part of the waterfall one day it will probably fall down maybe in a thousand years or something like that so well thank you for watching this uh, video and i'll see you in the next